Hey everyone, it's Carissa at Sprinkled with Glitter. Thanks for stopping by today. Today I have a card project featuring this beautiful new stamp set from Kennedy Grace Creations. It's called the Sweet Rose Stamp Set. I'm going to be doing a little bit of sparkle watercolor as well as some partial die cutting on this card. And I did want to go ahead and create more than one of these stamped images here because I had a feeling when I went to go do my watercolor, I was going to screw it up. <laughs> So I'm using my Misty here and I started by positioning my die that I'm going to use to cut this out up in the top right corner. And then from there, I just went ahead and positioned my floral image and I kind of put it to where it's going to hang off the left lower edge of that stitched re rectangle that I'm going to cut later on. And then I prepped my surface of my watercolor cardstock. I'm using the Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock. I prepped it with my EK Success powder tool. I stamped that using some Versamark ink and then I added my super fine detail gold embossing powder from Ranger and I'm going to go ahead and heat set that. Now because I used my Misty, it was really easy to create more than one of these and I was really glad that I did because I did mess up. I, I know myself pretty well so I kind of plan ahead for the screw ups. <laughs> so now it is time to do some partial die cutting. So I've just positioned my die back onto my watercolor cardstock, and now I'm letting the bottom left-hand corner of that stamped piece kind of stick out of my cutting plate sandwich. And what that gives me in the end is a mostly cut rectangle, but I still have this flower image intact, so I didn't cut through it with my die. Anything that's between the cutting plates will cut, and anything that's hanging out of the cutting plates will not cut. So that allowed me to create this partially die cut stitched rectangle. So to finish off my card panel front, I went ahead and just fussy cut around the edge of that floral image. And now I have a perfectly partially die cut panel. <laughs> Say that three times fast. So now it's time to get into the sparkle watercolor. And to do that, I'm going to be using some distress inks. I'm taking an Avery L stamp pocket here and just slipping a scrap piece of white cardstock into that stamp pocket so that I can use this as my palette for my inks. I'm using the Abandoned Coral, the Worn Lipstick, and the Tattered Rose for my flower images. And I'm going to just pick them up using my Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pen here. This is the clear overlay pen, so there's no color in the ink itself. It's just a clear, shimmery fluid that comes out of this ink. And I'm picking up my Distress inks with that. I'm using this kind of like I would a water brush, but instead of just plain water, it's adding some sparkle to my watercolor. And I've gone ahead and just added a base layer of that tattered rose all over this big, beautiful floral image. And then I went in and kind of added some darker shadow portions with the abandoned coral. Now I've gone ahead and kind of scribbled that off. And now I'm just taking some plain clear overlay and kind of spreading that out. And then going back into some places and intensifying that tattered rose color. Now for these smaller flowers, I'm using the Abandoned Coral along with the Worn Lipstick to color those in. Once again, just adding my base layer first and then going over it and adding some shadows and then kind of blending it out with just that clear base layer. Now I added the colors to my leaves as well. I kind of did it in the same way and I used the Crushed Olive and the Forest Moss. And then I added a little Hickory Smoke to the center of my flower. And I just wanted to show you there that I went ahead and scribbled that off on some scrap paper and I didn't have any staining on my brush tip. Now I decided I kind of wanted to create a blue haze around this flower just to kind of give the illusion of a sky. And I'm just using the Tumbled glass distress ink to create that along with a water brush. So when I first put this color down, it's a little bit intense, but that's okay. The more water that you add to it, the more it will kind of spread out and kind of de-intensify. Is that a word? <laughs> kind of dilute and get softer. So if you get it too strong in the first place, just kind of keep going over it and spreading it out with that water brush and you'll come out with a beautiful image. Now I've grabbed my Misty again because I want to stamp my greeting onto this vellum. And sometimes when you're stamping on vellum, it can be a little bit hard. You can kind of shift your stamp around because it's kind of a slick surface. So I find using my mini Misty for this really helps me get a really nice clean stamped sentiment onto this vellum. And to do that, I just used a little stays on black ink. So now I'm going to switch to my full size Misty here because I'm going to be doing a little background stamping. Now every Misty has that black foam piece in it. You can take it out and that allows you to use it with your cling mount rubber stamps. So what I've done is just taken that black piece out 
And now I'm just adding a piece of that misty paper, grid paper in there to protect the surface of the back part of my misty. And I'm using this bold diagonal lines background stamp. This is from My Favorite Things. I'm inking it up in some VersaFine Onyx Black pigment ink and stamping it onto some Nina Solar White cardstock. Now you may have noticed that before I stamped this paper, I went ahead and pushed that paper all the way into that bottom right hand corner. That's going to allow me to keep this paper in the exact same spot because you see, I didn't get a really good intense black stamped image on this. So I'm just re-inking again and stamping right over that stamp that I already did. And this is going to give me a nice, clean, crisp, dark, bold black image. And that's one of the things I love about the Misty so much is that it allows me to double stamp things that I don't quite get right the first time. Now, because this is a pigment ink, I went ahead and hit it with my heat tool to make sure that it dried completely. And now I'm just taking it over to my trimmer and trimming down a piece of that because I'm going to use it along the side of that partial die cut panel that I created earlier. Now, as I was looking at my card, I was kind of laying it out and looking at it, and I decided I really wanted to add a little bit more dimension to this image. So what I've done is gone ahead and stamped that image again. I embossed it, and I watercolored it in the exact same way that I did previously. And now I'm just using my scissors to fussy cut around the edge of that large flower. I'm going to add a layer of fun foam behind my partial die cut panel. So I'm just adding that on with some ATG tape runner adhesive and that's going to add even more dimension to my card front. And I'm going to use my ATG once again to add that strip of black and white pattern paper. Well, it's not actually pattern paper, but stamped piece there <laughs> to the left edge of my card. Now I did end up trimming down my card base quite a bit. I think it ended up to be around three and three quarters by five inches wide. And how I do this is I just kind of eyeball it. I kind of place that on there and trim down little bits until I figure out the right proportions. This just happened to be the size that I ended up with. And the nice thing about trimming that down was that this will allow me to put this in a standard A2 size envelope, even though I have that little piece hanging off the bottom left-hand edge of the card. Now to attach my sentiment, I just added a little bit of tape runner adhesive behind the area where I'm going to add that dimensional flower there. I added that on with a little bit of foam adhesive. I'm gonna end up taking that off in just a bit because I'm going to add some fun baker's twine behind it. And I did add a little bit more sparkle with some of these Kennedy Grace Creations sequins. And I just added those on using a little bit of multi-medium in the matte finish. Now you can see me adding this twine behind that flower here. Eventually that fussy cut flower is going to go over the top of this twine. And how I added this was I just used a couple of glue dots and I just kind of created that messy nest effect like I like to do with thread all the time. And then I used a little bit of multi-medium in the matte finish to tuck some of the ends behind there and create the shapes I really wanted. And I have to tell you, this twine is called Strawberry Twine. It's by Avery L. And I could not get that song, Strawberry Wine, out of my head. But instead of singing Strawberry Wine, I was like, Strawberry Twine 17. You know it. Sing it with me. <laughs> Anyway, here's a look at the completed card project. As always, you can find more information over on my blog at sprinkledwithglitter.com where you will also find a complete list of supplies. I will have a list of the featured supplies in the description at YouTube, so check that out. And I did wanna mention that this video is a part of a very special blog hop celebrating the grand opening of Kennedy Grace Creations, so be sure you head on over to my blog for prizes and more inspiration. Thanks for stopping by today. I hope you enjoyed this project and I hope my singing did not make your ears bleed. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.